started the delay of game here, but we'll say the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. So I've got one. I think it's just one thing we need to add on here, Brenton. I'll call it 22.5 where we do the assignment of president and vice president. Didn't get that done last time around. I think that's the only thing. Unless anybody's got something else we missed. You've already got that on there. 22, that's why I put it as 22.5, so we're good. So if there's no other changes, I'm going to look for a motion to accept with that change. I will make a motion to accept the agenda with the change of 22.5. There we go. It only makes a motion to get a second. Sarah needs a second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Consent agenda. Any last minute mods on that, guys? Otherwise, any questions? I, I did have one. I just had one question. I noticed I know I just noticed that there was payment for approval of our population study. Um, did we ever get the report back on that or? They're still working, they're still working on it. So okay. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Okay, I'll look for a motion to accept the consent agenda as is. Okay. You get a second? Second. Step as a second. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Approval of the minutes from last meeting. See any changes or modifications we need to make there? Nope. Look good to me. So. Motion. Okay. My second. All right. Motion in a second. Okay. Definitely the motion is definitely in a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. All right. Public comment. Anybody got anything you want to chat about tonight? Going once, going twice. Yep. Stand up and state your name for some, your address. <laughs> I just have a item on this time and place. I came in today for a building permit, and I just want to put a utility shed behind my existing house. Because the size is bigger than the 10 by 20 or 10 by 12, that uh, they're telling me I have to bring in four feet of dirt and put that shed up on top of that dirt. So if I read it right if i do a uh, 10 by 12 i don't need a building permit i don't need to do this build a dirt up because we are in the floodplain out there just wondering if there's any any type of variance or is there anything that should i just keep pursuing it with the building inspector people um if I put a one 10 by 12 shed and then put another one beside it, I mean, what's what's your feeling on that? Just kind of lost. Well, what size building are you proposing first to give us an order of magnitude? Originally, I was going to put up 14 by 20. Where are you at now? At uh, 10313 County Road 17. Are you still wanting to put up those same dimensions or are you? Yeah, I would like to stay with that, but I mean, if I have to reduce it down, but I mean, it's uh, to put up two sheds identical to each other and just to, but I don't feel that I should have to bring in four feet of dirt and have my sheds sticking up four feet higher than 
than the house. So everybody else's sheds in their backyard are all right down on the dirt. Okay, so who did you talk to today then at the, at the city? All three of them over there, Corey, and I think it's Keith or Kevin. Okay, let's sort of. Mike. Yeah. Russ, do you know any, have any wisdom on that one? Just, uh, or Jace, I don't know if who's got. Yeah. One thing we typically have is you all situations. The engineer, the engineering staff that is. Recommend or say how much yeah. it needs to be elevated. Understanding of situations that they indicate they would likely have to be raised, but once you have the building certification, then we go to very safely review. I can say, okay, what trees, like it's not in the building. Jim, has there been oh. Okay. This was just a way to do product competition. So I haven't had a chance to get all of it yet as to what is defined as accessory structure. And assuming that I'll be some kind of experience. Right. I was just wondering if there'd been any other precedents that being well, down there. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe what we can do is we can look into that a little bit, do a little bit of research and see what has been done in the past, and then maybe that we can come to a conclusion at that point, because right now I'd be just guessing. Um, yeah, but maybe a little premature, but like he said, if you when you do the permit or plot to do the application, then it goes to him. And then that's when they kind of make the determination. So you can do it either way. I guess you do the permit or you could wait and we can we can look into this a little bit and just see. Okay. So I'll kind of leave it up to you which way you want to do that. But. Um, yep, Jim Dolman. Jim Dolman was understated. I'll look through it with the building inspectors to see how that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? All right. Then we'll move on to the sheriff's update. Who's got this one tonight? <laughs> What's it? We have 224 calls this month. August is just a variety of long books. We have two maps out in the rural areas and towns. A copper electrical wire on one of the units. We also had a test tracking node off the top of the tractor. That's marching warrants continue. Got a lot of fires and stuff. Here's for how wet it's been, how fast a lot of those have priced out with like five of them the other night, all at the same time. All of those. Of the month for the sheriff's office is we're still doing the I Got Caught program with Vision Zero and Mary Queen and AAA. So when we see the kids out on their bicycles, scooters, all that stuff, when they got their helmets on, we stop out with them and say, hey, thanks for having your helmet on, and they get a coupon for free entry. Are you guys going to be doing like a national night out thing again out here at the church? I guess I hadn't. So I, I actually uh, sent Sally an email and I've got the plans going. I had to check with our budget people as far as what we had in the, in the bank already. Yep. In which we had money left over, so that's good. Yep. Uh, but I'm actually going to be gone for the whole August because I go to Iowa to train with the dog on <coughs> next this coming week. Okay, cool. No, I just wanted to double check because I hadn't seen anything it's, it's yet. Works, so you got the, the ball rolling, so. Perfect. Good, good. And just to touch on a couple of things. As far as like the bike safety stuff, not only. 
I don't know. I can save the last time. I'm still answering the question. When required, which is any time you can ask the problem. Those are things I've been addressing as well. Just want everybody to have a safe fun ride down. Also, if anybody does have events coming up, help us out. Sounds good. You guys have any questions? I do. I have one on our agenda, actually. A special event coming up uh, August 12th. Are you guys doing private security for that? Not that I've heard of. You can check our calendar. Or you've been down there. What is coming up on August? Uh, to benefit for the child. So, well, it's at. Uh, Senior center. Senior center. Senior center? Yeah. Oh, that okay. usually requires two officers, doesn't it? Just ask. For, uh, it's interesting that that's on the 12th. Child girls chapter in town. That's the 5K. It's that same. That will go past wall here all the way down to Lost River and then back. So we're definitely going to discuss safety with all those people converging on the senior center in the general vicinity. We're going to have a lot of cars coming with a lot of little girls running roads. That's something we'll have to. And hopefully, that's what they agree with the sheriff's office. Really, one of us who's planning or coordinating. Understood. I just, he just told us he's off for the entire month of August, so yeah. that's where I was wondering. Well, I'm trying to work on it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to look into that too. Because it's pretty busy in the summer. So yeah. We're all we're all in zombie mode because everybody just got done with all the fair and everything. Yeah. People were taking 19, 20 days in a row. Yeah. Being you guys are so fully staffed that everybody got plenty of rest and relaxation in between your shifts, right? Yeah. yeah. Trust me, I know. So I well, appreciate what you guys do. Um, any other questions? Nope. All right. Thank you guys. We still love them. We'll let you know. Okay. All right, let's go on to number eight then. Jim, why don't you uh, give yeah, us the old update? Discuss, yeah, discussion item. Uh, talked last week during our update. Item, is the item that are outstanding as far as the water and place to at this point? Right now, today, we have three requests. One is for a unit increase for good item number three, which is here to place pipe. There was a unit price increase for good item number eight, which is paper replacement. Talked a little bit about that one in the past. Last thing on the, the uh, list is the time extension. I know extension is a subject, especially when the project already had one or two to start with. So, um, what I would like tonight is basically just to defer this this um, item to whoever has the infrastructure portfolio after tonight meeting with the contractor that back and support. Commission and the city council as a whole after we've had a chance to discuss that. I don't think it does much good for us to debate all this tonight. I think we need to have a discussion with, with the contractor and the whole infrastructure for that time. Because they like a more solid time, you know, where are they guys looking at it? Because I know yeah. I know they've had trouble getting supplies, but still we need to get a little bit better definition on where we are. So your email said that the subcontractor is waiting until they get approval, is that right? They are not at the moment. They did take the effort or make the effort to get, get going on it just okay. to show a good thing. Okay. So that was a kind of a um, threat we got, I guess you could say, in time to try to expedite it. But we discussed it, had comments on it. So why don't we just assume we'll table this and we'll bring it up at the next meeting? Is that plenty of time? Yeah. So All, right. Two weeks to meet. All right, so we will table that. That's, that's Okay. All right, so let's move on to nine then. Mr. Jim, I'm assuming you have that one as well. I do, yes. So you were given in your in the email earlier today a token which is just a ironwood pipes. Um, I saved you the specifications rather large and tough, tough to email. So uh, this is a project that we've been pursuing since 2017. 
Uh, we've had a settle on the project now with residents that we have not a replacement for the rehab type project. We stripped out the yard room and lighting, trying to get a shared use map. This is connector into the subdivision, onto its sidewalks. And so, Ironwood Drive is a mill and fill overlay, and then Chestnut has um, some more in depth areas and repair, repair we've got to replace with the fashion and so So, uh, what this is doing is approving the plans. Authorizing the auditor to uh, advertise for hearing. Okay. I just had a quick question. Can you remind me? I know you met with the residents. Um, can you remind me with the special assessment policy where where we're in that process? I mean, were they given estimates of the cost? They were given estimates of the cost based on the petition methodology, which the special assessment policy will annually review. Okay. Fairly okay. But once we get the numbers, once we send it out for bids, we get the numbers from the contractor to do it. Or you work it, you work it, you get a better idea of what it would be based on the the, the estimated project cost. We have what the Okay, so then the residents would have a second opportunity to see what the cost is and, and weigh in. So typically, okay. if depends on how you want to do it, but if the project comes in at or under budget, it's just gone forward with the project based on the estimate saying that that information would be good to start with. But if it's a drastic swing one way or the other, you let the residents know what the acceptance would be. But for this project, I believe we're. We, we have. They, yeah, they have the neighborhood has a couple point of contacts that we've been working with. Okay. They've been very good about getting the information out. So once we have that, we'll share that with them and they'll send it out to the whole great. I believe almost every household covered through their network there. So we share that with them. That's what we told them to do for this okay. project. That would be my preference. Heads up. This is what the update estimate is. Higher low for the didn't fell. Okay, so. And you guys will handle that because last time I'll. Yeah, I actually just communicated with them this morning tonight, but I didn't know that this was on the agenda. Excellent. That way, Becker knew it was on the agenda, the idea about a month. Hear back from us. It's going to be about a month period, roughly a month period mm -hmm. from this point to when we have the bids. Mm -hmm. Has there been any discussion with them about a potential city contribution to the cost? In general, we thought that if the city did, they would consider you know, our recommended from the staff side to be similar like what we do any other bigger projects. The ones that was one we did in the 76 round about that project we did about 25%. Okay, so the, the residents are aware. Okay. Okay. So we had that conversation. Okay, thank you. There was a bit of a set commitment how much would be just the ballpark saying this is generally what we've done on. Projects on a larger scale. Okay. That's what the city has done. Thank you. Well, and I think we need to be, you know, fair when we start dabbling into helping certain areas right. of the city. We're consistent. Yeah. Yeah, and that's fair to say around like percent. So this kid is more sustainable. All right. Any other questions on nine? <laughs> well, that'd be the plan is the most of the room plan specification. Okay. <clears throat> but just you're okay if we combine A and B? Because I mean it's pretty much the uh, same same cadence to get through here. So all right. Um anybody want to make a motion then to approve? I'm or, just going to Areas that required Thank you, Okay, so I'm gonna look for a motion for combining both A and B to accept the resolution. And I will uh, make a motion to approve the plans and specs and um, direct the auditor to advertise for bids for um, Storm Sewer and Street Improvement District number 2022-10, Chestnut Ironwood Drive. Okay. Please, with what I see here is the final. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. 
It needs to get done. Yes. Yeah, it's been too many years, so. Yeah, we got a motion from Naomi, a second from Sarah, so all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, it's unanimous, so it passes. All right, move on to 10. Jace, you got this one. Okay. So in front of you tonight, uh, there's a little bit of packet information, including my staff report uh, and some site plans, as well as the planning development district agreement. Uh, just a little background, uh, both, all three applications are for a rezone plot and planning and development. Um, the plot is a replot of a variety of lots through Lakeview Heights, uh, Lakeview Heights 3rd Edition and Lakeview Heights 4th Edition. Uh, it consists of five lots, uh, four of which are, will remain commercial with the fifth having that plan unit development proposed uh, for their specific apartment design. Uh, during the presentation of the PUD concept to the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, that was on April 12th, the Commission had generally accepted the concept of the planning and development and staff to create the planning and development district agreement that's in front of you. Um, the one exception they did have was that they requested there be elevators in each building uh, on June 14th. With that in mind, we took it forward to the hearing on June 14th. The Planning and Zoning Commission voted. A uh, unanimous way to recommend approval for rezone of plat for Lakeview Heights 5th edition. Um, and additionally, voted unanimously to recommend approval of Lakeview Heights apartment planning and development with the condition that the elevators remain required in the PUD. Um, currently, the PUD district, specific, specifically section 4, subsection K, requires the installation of those elevators the commission, or the commission asked for. Uh, however, the four plans that are in Exhibit A of that agreement not specify the identified location. Uh, the comprehensive plan and future land use map identifies the areas generally uh, community focus, uh, which specifies that in most instances within the community focus areas, future land use map are future land uses that are expected to include a combination of higher density residential and commercial uses. Uh, with that in mind, staff would recommend that council approve the re or proposed rezoning plat for Lake Connect's fifth edition. And staff would also recommend that council approve the PUD application for Lakeview Heights Apartment. I would note regarding the elevators, if council is of the opinion that those elevators should stay, that they will bring forward the planning zoning commission's recommendation. Then I would recommend that an additional condition be added that requires the applicant to bring forward those floor plans that show the elevator as installed. Um, if you do not agree and wish to approve this without the, the elevators, if, if that's the route you choose, then I would just recommend that we remove um, section four, subject K out of the PUD disagreement, which is that reference for elevators. Uh, one thing to keep in mind when you come up to your discussion this evening, there's a variety of zones within the city of Horse that do allow elevators. So this conversation is actually not whether or not an elevator is a permitted use, especially within the zone that this property is currently. It's zone C2 which would allow 8 to 14 units per building subject to the setbacks in this C2. But this PUD is for is to amend the height, the setbacks, density, signage, um, and uh, just the building aesthetic itself. Uh, other than that, if you have any questions, we'll you know, I'll pull up the site plan here, and I just wanted to kind of get you guys oriented, which is really not the right place right now, so let me get over there. Oh, sorry, the elevators, if I misspoke, the elevators are, are currently permitted by right through D2 in R5 zoning. Sorry. <laughs> the departments are permitted in the different, in the C2 zoning. There. So let me ask this then, are elevators, I mean, is this something that we're, we require or we're not requiring? No, so no. elevators are anything of Building code and whether the current building code standards is part of it. My understanding is the building code, I'm not a building code expert, but there are different Thank types you. of units. Units that can be modified to be ADA compliant, and there's units that are just flat out not ADA compliant. And depending on what the builder is doing, requires or not, or kind of whether or not elevators are required. In this case, what they're proposing, per building code, would not require elevators. Now, when I 
talked to, I actually sent out some information requests to Fargo and West Fargo just to see how they handle kind of situations like this. None of them have particular specific addendums to the building code, but they begin stick to the building code. So their planning and development districts have a list of like six or seven things that can be modified. For the city of Forest does things a little different. I think that's where the gray area comes in. I don't lose this time and all. So more is we establish a district rather than an overlay. So zoning is actually PUD. It's not R5 with a PUD total. And by the establishment of that district, it's kind of creating the rules of the district. And I think that's where this is correct and wrong. That's where kind of the a determination that of something outside of maybe the realms of what's normally associated with the PUD make on the play because we're actually creating something completely different than just using the zone as a base standard building off that but to simplify this as much as possible the planning commission wants an elevator in each one of the apartment buildings because the city of Horace will not have that many apartment buildings so they want these buildings to be nice buildings that accommodate older families or older individuals and those that do not have the ability to use stairs. So the planning commission did is made a recommendation to the city council that stairs be included in each one of the apartments or elevators, excuse me, elevators be installed in each one of these buildings. So that's what we did in this agreement. Whether the developer wants to go along with that is up to them. The city's not forcing them to execute this PUD agreement. Uh, it's not an argument, a legal argument of ADA compliance or anything. It's a desire for the planning commission to have an elevator in each one of these buildings. They're making that recommendation to the city council. What you guys decide um, is the ultimate decision for this PUD agreement. And it's again an agreement that we're discussing here. Um, if the applicant desires, they can go back to the underlying zoning district that most closely <laughs> relates to this type of development, which I believe would be. R5. R5 or C2 is actually. So I guess my question would be is that our purview to get into building codes? If the city council wants to accept the planning commission's recommendation and require that an elevator be installed in each building. How many people on the planning commission? I think the question was uh, if they were Is there any questions on that? <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. You mean on just on the issue of the elevator? Well, just on the in general here. Well, oh. if you go ahead. And... Yeah. Uh, Chris Mack with uh, Christensen Company. Uh, and I also have an uh, architect with. Uh, and um, yes, the elevators um, have been an issue that uh, great support um, other than the elevator um, process. Um, what, I, what I handed to you guys was elevations of the building that we're proposing right now, that's the first sheet, and then the, the height restriction is, is the biggest thing that we ran into and we wanted mm -hmm. to develop the department um, on this site. Um, so we have an alternate option two, which is a flat roof option, which with this option, we would not need a PD or anything. Um, we could just, and, and with the current zoning, um, and you'll see as I continue talking, we could just move forward and go straight to um, building permit um, and Inspector, and it would be approved because um, it is uh, right. Because you you could build a flat top roof without the elevators, and you're still within our. No, but there's six steps. Um, option. Oh, we did another option, which is very similar to um, what we're proposing. It just has a uh, lower 18 foot um, instead of 9 foot. So, pardon me. 
would still be under that 45 foot. And as you see on the last page, did an alternate site plan. So the highlighted block is what it currently is right now. And if we build four buildings um, right away, um, we would uh, meet the density and we meet the height with one of the other options. Um, and once once the new zoning code um, is a, or the new zoning ordinance is approved next year, hopefully um, we could rezone it and we would meet all of the. Uh, and currently with this, we do meet the setback. I think we would need to adjust this to uh, easterly buildings a little bit um, because I believe that the setback is required. I think I'm at like 29, so I could make those adjustments. Um, and we'd be able to pull four buildings now. We'd rezone it with the new ordinance and we could build uh, the fifth building or get a permit for the fifth building uh, next year. But uh, we'd really like to start foundations on these um, this uh, fall yet. Um, we plan on getting a uh, building permit on Friday, or well, about the end of the street. Any other questions on that? Jim, um, just can you see me here? I've seen a couple of different. I understand that you have an alternative and what's being proposed. I'm seeing multiple buildings first, second, third, and fourth. And help me or help me understand or correct me if I'm wrong. At one point in time, were these locked units on the third floor, or did that change? That's uh, correct. Um, on all the options, um, they all would still have the lock in there. Okay. Yeah. I think it, we just, on the alternate, we don't have all four of these. I'm just trying to understand. So, on the locks, what's the ceiling height on those? I'm seeing this on the floor plan. Find the location of the So on the flat row, it'd be 90 foot towards there. And then the alternate is two of the same one back there. One that would still meet. So planning and zoning desire to have elevators in this. Or, by the way, um, very nice looking units. Original proposed option versus the older variant. Um, what is the major drawback to the request by planning and zoning? Well, a lot of it is uh, just the cost and changing the changes more than just the elevators. It's What you have, and Tim would bring to talk to this uh, better than I can, um, is, is with making all the units more uh, accessible. For, for yep. if you have, once you add the elevator into the building, then all of the apartment units have to be at type B. Right now, without the elevator, it's type B, it's on the first, or it's on the main level only, type B, and it's type A, um, which is the fully. Um, so second and third floors without an elevator, they're able to have some smaller doorways, um, small, some smaller bathrooms. You don't have to have all the space in your bathroom so you can take that back into you know, the washroom closet or the living room. There's also the loss of income um, for the property if you have to reduce the size of your units and take out that space to add in an elevator. The elevator alone is around $150,000. So 
because you have to have other accommodations and other costs to your building for wall backing, larger doors, some other things. How much would how much would a unit increase in price for that tenant if you had the elevator versus non elevator? Would you be increasing the price? Would that end up happening? Yes, the number. I mean, that cost would end up coming back to higher rents and to you know wanting to build Do you have um? Average rental, what the rental rates are going to be in the units? I do not. Okay. Russ, did you guys talk at planning and zoning about maybe having some have elevators and the others not? As opposed to all or nothing? We did not. Okay. Is that something you guys would consider? I don't think so. I okay. Think if that was the case, we would talk about. Just throwing it out there as an option because yeah. you guys, it just seems like it's an all or nothing here and I want to see if there's a compromise we can come up with here to keep everybody happy. Okay. Um, I do have a few questions that might be a little bit off of this topic. I don't know if we want to take them out. Um, I don't know how far off they are. Well, they're off, so maybe we should continue. Well, I mean, I want to stay focused. Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So we'll start with Jump into this. this ownership group with possible interactions and what this is. Uh, what's that? I, I know the design group that is proposing this. It's not the owner. Okay. Thank you for the correction. Do we know who the ownership group is? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we've worked with them on a lot of projects. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if we can get into that. Yeah, okay. Um, so that being said, I guess we're we've worked with Bella, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, we had some pretty good interactions with them. I know that they seen here, but I I have a little bit of heartburn. Um, Making any recommendations on the building. So I want to talk a little bit. I, I think Corey says is there some middle ground that can be met here where a portion of these buildings is on one way or so the other way. We look at maybe some options, some alternatives, see what we can do maybe meet in the middle is where I'm at. So I want to open it up, Jeff. I'm sorry yep. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I know you're trying to make some comments, but I want to hear what you have to say here too. So earlier, JC said um, we have limited land available for apartment buildings. Is that correct? That you stated? Or no. Is that, you, that? This, this land for the comprehensive plan is that the new community focus. Maybe that's what you're alluding to. No, I just meant overall in the city, where there's going to be a limited number of farm buildings in the city. I believe is what the statement was earlier. I think I made that. You made that? Okay. Do we know approximately how many? Acres right now will be even available in the city for apartment buildings. As if we only have as many as you want. Okay. It's literally it's literally a blank slate. So right now that comment was not really accurate then that you know we could have more than just these five coming in at some point. I'm just saying at some point in the future. I'm just trying to figure out the finality of okay, this decision. Because if that was true, then you know, maybe you would want a nicer building. I don't this know. Be your, your first major Correct. There are several on as far as the pound plant areas like the 1776 district and the old town that do identify some higher density projects that could be future land uses. Your downtown feels more of a commercial style, uh, maybe mixed use where you're reselling the bottom units on top. That's, that's identified and proposed in the comp plan. Now, obviously, the city doesn't. Right. I was just looking for clarification if that was true. That was all. Um, you would like to see it. I, I think this is. Uh, I think there's some questions in the gray area. First, and so as a council, and I'm going to ask where we're dealing with. I think personally, just to have different styles of. But I can see. 
of these different files here. This icon is something that's outlining that. So when we have smaller <coughs> buildings, what would be the larger building? What do they want to be limited to the 45 foot? Is, is, we have to ask ourselves some of those questions. And, and as planning and zoning, <coughs> Like let's say a C2 designation, what as a community? When do you want to see elevators? When do you changing this curbing of the victims? You know, those are the things that as a community, because we don't have this, we have not hired out. And so unfortunately, this one decision is falling on us with very little guidance to come off of. That's something I'm struggling with. I personally enjoy elevators. I don't like, I, I mean, it's in one year and I had to haul all my stuff off like the steps and it was tough, right? But um, that doesn't necessarily mean that we have a requirement for that. I, mean, I don't believe we have an amendment for it as of yet. So whatever we decide here tonight, I think we need to their necks at the back to make sure that they get with planning and zoning to iron out some of those details so that there aren't these types of questions moving forward and we can simply, if you will, say, yes, this is what we want to do. This is, and then people that are in the design process can plan for these things. Expenses are expected to be those types of things. Just looking to be clear. The only reason planning and zoning can request elevators is that is the absolute only reason. There's no other building code. There is no other ADA reason that we are requesting. It's it's similar to PUD. We can and we'd like to be able to have people like my age living on second and third. So. How? Can you tell me um, how wide your staircases are going to be? I didn't. Maybe I'm missing that. If they didn't have the elevator. Um, yeah, I believe they're. Uh, I'm sorry. Go to the total width of the landing and put it in. You said six and a half feet. Yeah. So. What's the overall is 12 or 13, two and three quarters. Am I reading that right? Yeah, yeah. I got it. Yeah. Oh, six and a half roughly, and then you'll have uh, plus with the railing, right? Yeah. By your Okay, other questions? And so it's just so that I'm clear, you're saying that tonight, if we were to say no to the PUD, that they could continue forward with their apartments in some sort of modified plan here mm -hmm. because right. it doesn't meet, because it does not meet, well, you're, what you're currently proposing does not meet uh, the density. Correct. Well, Limitations. The PUD does not, but uh, <clears throat> with um, the alternate option and the way that the block currently sets um, without the flat, um, mm -hmm. we do need the density as well. well. We just have to go for um, Be Because it really is, I mean, I see some of the documents here. The proposed zoning is R5. I mean, it is, you're yeah. saying it's a PUD, but really it is a change from C2. To R5. Well, what we're doing with the PUD for, and, and I wasn't aware of that C2 allowed apartment units. Um, so, what we do is we use R5 as the base zoning, and then we put PUD modification to Correct. And essentially, then the, the zone of the property would be R5 is essentially the key. The base, the baseline that was built off of to tap into having more units per acre right. is what and we're doing. What the PUD is 
UV allows for that excess basically as you can. Well, C2, but I'm looking for zoning C2 would allow. 8 to 14. 8 to 14. And you want 20. Oh, what was that? And you want 20. We want 20, but like I said, with that alternate site plan option, you can um, go four right now. And with the the new zoning ordinance that is in process right now, um, it would be 1776. We could go with the higher density. Um, and I believe the height requirement uh, is 50 feet or 50 feet? 54 is what I what, uh, the request is here to change from the current. No, but, uh, with the new zoning ordinance, one second. Okay. And that's year. currently being proposed, but not approved. Right. And what was the reasoning behind making considering those changes to those designations? From, so you're asking from, for why we're changing the whole ordinance? Well, I'm just wondering with the with the units, you said it's going to happen anyway in December. So Increase in units. Hopefully the, the that's, new, that's assuming that the post title for recodification. Okay. And okay. Under C2, all they can have is 8 to 14 units. Yep. Yep, that's what I see. But you're saying this can be circumvented anyway by just not doing a PUD and just doing a different yeah. proposal mm -hmm. if you so yeah, choose. Yep. And honestly, okay. I don't like the way that option looks. If the I, flat looks. I, don't, I don't like that. If I can just say that, I'm sorry. Well, no, it's, the, it's the aesthetics too. <laughs> I mean, that's part I, of the deal I, when we're I looking at it. Community to look pleasing as well. Like I don't. This is right. So, are you saying that if we say we want elevators, then you're going to skip the first option and go straight to option? Too, possibly. Well, I mean, depending on what happens tonight. Yeah. I'll we'll to talk to the ownership group. Um, okay. It is, I'm not saying it's not possible. Right. I just, I, I am just yeah. going to voice my concern about option two right now. Uh -huh. I don't, I don't think it's aesthetically pleasing. Well, and just, just so you know, that their desires to keep it or have it based on the commercial go out for that apartment design review. To the planning commission. Just so the planning commission will have input on the design of the building. Can you say can you say that one more time, Lucas? In commercial. Can, can you say that one more time? Well, well, it's C two right now. They're saying they want to rezone it to R five PUD. Am I correct? So it's still C two then. No, so the forest mm. creates and uh, basically creates an additional zone for the plant new development. Okay. So in a lot of other municipalities, let's say they were going to have R5, R5 would be a place, right? That'd be what sets your initial stand. And then an overlay in those other communities would come over and basically that would allow for different uses, different heights, different sizes. We combine them all together into one district. So the zoning of that property would be click on they don't show zoning on the assessor, but if you click on the property, it would show it as planning unit development. There wouldn't be an R5, there wouldn't be a C2. There would be. Does that make sense? I think so. Um, I do have a couple other questions. So I did see in the application, um, you discuss the current infrastructure along 81st Avenue and Lake Drive will support the proposed development. But I didn't see any discussion of what's happening to the traffic once it leaves the development. Well, we provided a, uh, a traffic study for that for the entire um, for that entire 40 acres. Of I guess I haven't seen that. Yeah, that was provided. It was provided with the original Lakeview type condition, correct? In, when I submitted the application, I was brought up um, and what we're proposing 
it is, uh, or we have the full access of the 2017, and, um, and then we'll have a, a right in on top of 76, which is shown on the flat. Mm -hmm. um, and then you would have several um, exits on to Lakeview Drive, and then we'll do a, a shared access by the uh, current um, Baker facility. But in essence, all the traffic's really essentially funneling back over to CAS 17. I mean, 76, I mean, you would agree. Yeah, I have significant traffic concerns for that. Yes, yeah. Uh, satisfactory. By who? In the report. The traffic study. Oh, I haven't seen the traffic study. I think that's adding a lot of extra traffic onto CAS 17. We don't have our 76 exit out of there and I know we're I know we're building on 66 streets but I don't really people choose their routes I don't know that I really see people utilizing that route going through residential so I think it's just pushing it all over to CAS 17 either are from 76 by Casey's by the church or maybe all the way down Wall Avenue and back up to 17 then either north or south um but there will be an exit east on 76. It'll go to 45th. Up. When when is that? That's they're doing it this year, I guess. They pave it this year. 76 pave it 45th, and then they'll connect to 2nd. Yep. The and, from 64th to 2nd. And when is that set to be done? I believe as so 45th is going to be paved all the way from 76th to 52nd Avenue this year. So there's that one mile section from yeah. 64th yep. to 52nd, that's Fargo. Yep. Not County. County okay. expects to have all theirs done this year. Okay. Fargo would need to be this year or in the next year. Um, I look at that for the Metro College conversation. Right. That's the last I heard the plan was to have because of next year's problem that we're going to be dealing with the 17. So it was supposed to be done this year. So the plan is for that entire roadway to be paved this year. Yes, well, it's it's the plan. Paid, 76 is currently paved off. I've seen that. Yep. No, it's paved up to 69. Yeah, I've been told that road. It's just short. Yeah. It's very close. But then the last section is just Fargo's portion. Fargo's done with the project, but they have been working on and they've been doing underground a lot. Okay, and then it'll connect to what's currently paved right now on 45th. 52nd Avenue. 52nd Avenue. Okay. City of Fargo project with the incentive to get it complete this year, but Okay, I still think it's a lot of traffic uh, concern on CAS 17. And I saw there was a mention of a, changing a setback for a ladder truck. Um, the fire is fire here. No. Um, do we have a ladder truck? No, but part of their joint all for service in the event that they need a ladder truck. Part of the staff discussion was reorienting some of the sheds, so they moved the building in order to accommodate a ladder truck because a ladder truck would be the fifty. So in the event that a fire would break out. <clears throat> ladder truck, and I know they're working on getting a ladder truck. Or they are have considered that. There are discussions, but we have mutual agreement with yeah. West Fargo, so they yeah. help. Yeah. So that that request was specific because of the ability to service that. Okay. So we got to do some public hearing, huh? Yeah. Lucas, you getting a little nervous, sir? There. Do one public hearing for all three of them. Yeah, so what I'll do is I will open it up then have public hearing. We've had a lot of pre pre hearing here, but we'll open up for. Public hearing. Um, anybody got some anything you want to talk about with the plat or the rezone or the planned unit development? You guys have any more concerns or questions about this? I mean, like I said, I like the the. the um, the non flat roofs because that's going to be that's going to be our show. People are driving on 17. Either five or four. And by what we come up with tonight. Hmm? 
it's yeah yeah I mean, they just got in front of planning and zoning right now and Yeah, for us. This layout is the nicest one I've seen. <clears throat> that's right. That's what I mean. I know there's been a lot of work put into this. That's the thing, you know. My concern is with there. We've done the traffic studies, Jim, if you want to elaborate on that, I don't know. I mean, I know we spent quite a bit of time when the schools were being built talking yeah, about this. Chris, go ahead. Current traffic study that you guys don't have uh, parks in the traffic. Uh, and that is with additional detail to the north that's just tonight, but there is going to be, with the addition to the department that will support um, additional, um, it's uh, retail uh, users and other users, I know the city staff and council members. Um, but also, the department that will help support those businesses. We also have the walkability thing we've been talking about for a few, three years now. That you know, if we had something like this, there you still have the walkability with the people in the apartment. Well, obviously, you'll have kids going to school. And then we'll have they have access to those amenities that you're talking about uh, as well. So it's just something that we've so that you don't have to drive everywhere like we was talking about. So people do have access like this as well. So but it's such a kind of dumping in an apartment kind of in the middle of a new commercial area. Why would you want to dump this in the center? You're having commercial to the north, you have the schools to the east. Why would you want to dump an apartment basically kind of in the middle of what you're planning to be your commercial area? I don't think the area is a good area where they're planning the apartments. If there's a specific reason that they did just take that particular lot for it, I can speak to that one. Um, yeah, and it's, 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 a, uh, it's a possibility that the retail going to the north that we can't talk about right now may need the density to be. And the additional retail that, that's currently being constructed. Uh, additional restaurants, shops, and parks, and then a larger in the north, and the apartments will go hand in hand with those. Uh, help support those businesses, and it will be all walkable because part of the design when we did um, this uh, development, we provided sidewalks to uh, connect all the businesses throughout. So those users or those apartments will not have to, they don't want to, but they will not have to drive. And it is a private a road network system to get them to other places. Yeah, Russ, go ahead. Oh, uh, planning. Uh, we have been considering where apartments would go in the city. This is one of the best spots. When, the, when this plan came out, it was, oh, good. This is one of the best spots I could possibly imagine. Uh, just for those of you who don't know where I live, I'm going to be the only, one of the only uh, three families who may look out their, their front window and actually see these from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I will, I will meet them on the street because, and I'm not concerned with that because We've actually done a really good job of laying out the streets in that section. When I mean section, I mean that 
that square mile. This is the first place where we've had a raw, a raw tower. No, like I said, I know we've talked about ever since the schools decided that they were coming. This has all been talked about and we've been. <clears throat> we, even, we even told the schools how they would set up in order to expedite the whole flow. So. And I think in the comprehensive plan, you know, we talk about the different areas in the 1776 area, but in my my feeling, when it talks about the compact residential, it's referring to the other areas around this way, with this area being more the mixed use, which is the commercial area. And I think there's already, I looked up, I don't know if it's called Lakeview or First Edition, the, the additions just south of this area. There's 170 homes going in over there that are already platted, I believe. Yeah. Um, I feel like this was our community focus area, mostly for commercial. I just want to say that before the vote, I have serious concerns about traffic, um, and I don't think I can support it. Okay. Any? You have to think about with apartments, we have parking. I hate to say it, but when you come to apartments, we have one vehicle. I mean, I look at my daughter, she's got two, and her boyfriend's got one. They got three vehicles, not no parking. So where do you put those vehicles with all that extra parking? I did take a look at the parking plan here, and um, there are serious expensive garages throughout the middle of this layout. And then there's also parking spots on, on <coughs> one side of each one of these. Used to be in there. There's no north south designated. Right there, north is okay. So. Um, basically along that whole edge. So that's one of my concerns too, because I'm not allowing parking on Lakeview Drive or Jackson. These are not streets that we should have on street parking. So making sure that there's adequate spots and garages and whatnot was something that was taken into consideration when I first laid eyes on. That is my big Okay. Naomi, you have thoughts on this one? I mean, I can see both both sides of point of view. Um, but like Sarah mentioned, you know, there are things that are in the works that are not able to come out in the public right now um, that would help support um, some of this. Um, I am struggling because I I mean, I live in a, we live in a small town. I, you know, it's, it's hard to think we're having all these apartment buildings going up, but at the same time, um, I, I don't, <laughs> if they're going to go forward with something that looks like that versus this, I kind of like the aesthetics of this and I just don't, I would rather not. I mean, Mr. Mac said that they can just Go and do it. Is mm -hmm. that is that so, correct? No, That's <laughs> the zone commercial it has to go back to the planning commission for design review. It's zoned in a commercial district. And it is commercial. It's city center commercial. It's town center commercial. Oh, the yeah, right? the zoning district is C2. Yep, C2. which is town center commercial. Yep. The one thing we do need to remember too as a group is that of us commenting don't own the property. And so when you own the land, you can do what you want within reason on the land, provided that it meets a certain set of criteria. It's something that I'm struggling with on my at my own home because I've got land owned by others in my backyard. And there's some things happening in my back backyard that I don't particularly care for. But it doesn't mean as a council member that I can sit and say, well, I don't like the way that looks or I don't like what's going on there. They own the land as long as they're within the rights and procedures, ordinances and building codes. They can do what they want on that land. And I do want to remind everybody of that. Well, that's a fair, fair say. Um, um, do you guys have? Any more comments you want to talk about on the elevator side of this thing? Because 
and kind of see what will probably happen here if we force the elevator issue. I agree with planning and zoning. And we can also go against it too. I'm just saying it's not. I, won't be the first time. I know it won't be the first time. We I don't do it very right. often. You know that. Know that. Hmm? If our choice is to hold for elevators and get ugly buildings, we'd rather see the beautiful buildings. Yeah. About the elevators. <laughs> I mean, I think that's what we're thinking too, Russ. That's why I'm. My concern also is that, you know, I am. We get slammed all the time with, oh, this, this, it's so expensive to live here. Well, think about them. They just said that it's going to be expensive for these tenants. It's going to inject the rates out too. I mean, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm struggling because. I like the look of this building. I particularly don't care for the flat top. I have voiced my concerns about the way things look on County 17. Time and again. Over and over. And I also understand that, you know, this elevator is important to some people, but at the same time, I would rather not see cost going up just so we can say we wanted an elevator. We don't ha and we don't know the the cost per rental units. With uh, with elevator without elevator. OK, but we don't know what rental rates are going to be. I mean, we talk about affordability. I'm just throwing it out for discussion. I mean, sometimes rents are really expensive. I mean, I did more than my mortgage, so I, I don't know what the apartments would rent for. I guess is what I'm saying. How many units do we have for rent in Horace right now? Friend? Apartments. Sure. No, no, no. Yeah. Two apartments. There, I, I don't know where of some. You have two apartment areas of apartments. You have just north of the center, yeah. and, and that's a three story building. And you have off Moss Way. Do I know of any available? I know if you're not aware of any available, but there might be some totally different type of. And this would this will add 180 apartment units. It's complex. Okay. Well, yeah, and at some point we are going to have to have apartments in town here. Um, we need some place for people to live that do not have the luxury of getting into a home yet. You know, some of the younger people don't have that yet. And uh, we want to be able to provide an alternative option for other people to move into town here too. So. Jeff. I uh, would much rather have the look of the. Uh, the full roof department buildings. I'm not a flat top building kind of guy. Um, these buildings are already previously built over by the Cashwise on uh, 52nd Avenue. Um, for the people who want to take a look at. It. Um, they are a nice looking building. I know. Like to my comment of you know how many apartments we currently have available right now, uh, we don't have a lot. Even my parents would be renting a place somewhere here in town if they were. Um, it's kind of hard for elderly people to find a place right now to move into a home. Uh, there's not a lot out here um, that is within reason for cost right now. So, my personal opinion, I'd rather have a better looking building without elevators than. A flat top roof building that may not look as good just to work around the problem with the elevators. I just want to be clear that. So if we do have older people, which I care deeply about because we don't have enough here for senior citizens and, and we're the older part of our population. So there's some discrepancy here, obviously, between us catching up with building code and lining out some what we want the community to look like. We can say we don't want apartments and that's great. And probably not going to go that way. Okay. Um, 
regardless. They're, they've already got an alternative. So if we say no to this, there's another alternative that was already passed out. So I want everyone to know what we're doing here. I don't care for that. I'm going to be real frank. Um, I don't like being put in this position. It's not, not good for how we want to work with the development group as a city. Um, just so you know, at the very beginning, we weren't going to go with the peak. So it wasn't like we threw this on you. We've been working on this since last February. I want and some the, of the history here. This and, is what I need to hear. These were the options. We've we'll, we'll been uh, seeing, he's he seen these options before Jace was in, uh, working here. Mm -hmm. um, we did several options, and Brenton did not like the other options. So this is why we went into the PUD process. They, they so actually, what like we proposed a five row. Originally, they were thinking of five row. And meeting Chris going, hey, this is going to be challenging. How are you, how can you make it more exciting and pleasing to the community? Yeah. A version similar to this. I don't think this is the exact same one. They're, they're, they're very similar. You have tweaks and modifications of just Oh, yeah. So how many units could we have that all that would require assistance could live in across five buildings? The other thing I would think about too is a little bit into the future here. I think we are going to be chasing some senior living um, facilities in town here well, there's been some talk, talk and i think didn't we already talk about a 55 we've talked about it we just got to get a little bit more aggressive and pursuing some of that i think that's required in deer creek yes mm -hmm. that's what i thought because he specifically came here and wanted to do yeah just the ground level and he had brought it to the council you know it's just too bad that those people yeah so I know we had discussions in the past about the version and the man camp being set up. We're not going to have these apartments completely taken over by that for the next five or ten years. I would hope not, but we have no control over that. Right. We don't have any control over that. That's, the, rent, that's the renters. But I would rather not see man camps. <laughs> yeah, well, that's I mean, I'd rather have somebody living in a beautiful apartment than having man caps set up. Exactly. But, you know, it's just not something that I would want to see. I know, me too. Because our planning and zoning has a right to request that. And I think that. But he also just said he would, if. If it came down to beautification, he Has would it come rather. Down to that? Is that where we're at? If we request the elevators, you guys are going to chop it and snip it and do what you can to cheapen it up. Well, not cheapen it up, but. It has to be affordable and feasible as a project. Yeah, but then we got to meet the ordinance. Um, so, so we got to talk with ownership group and see if that's what, what we want to do, but, but it, that is a big issue. Right? The affordability, just with the way construction costs are going up so naturally, and then we're adding additional items to it. Where IBC uh, code governing body doesn't require it. I think we need to change that. So change what? What we require when? I think we're far too vague and far too lax on. But isn't that what like we a require when? I isn't that a century know. code though? No, no, no. It's, the, it's the building code. The building code. I think I, I think that whatever we decide to do, we should also direct city staff to work with zoning and authority seven jurisdiction to prepare an amendment or an addendum to our building code that outlines these specific things. Or Height requirements when an apartment is so big, we want to see elevators when it falls into the zoning. We want to these types of things. What a standard addendum would do in building code, I want to know. 
because I think we are behind on that and it's putting us in a situation here where we don't have clear direction to make a call. And we've got a request from four people on the planning and zoning that represent this community that say we want elevators. The rest of us are going, well, we like the building that looks pretty and they even said, well, but if the has, building code, it's building code. Right. Though. So if they don't require it, how can we go against building code? You're not going against it. You're making an addendum that says, as a city, this is what we want. The city can alter the state building code specific to the city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Basically, yeah, I got gotcha. to. Well, it just. How do you got? This is basically what you're asking to do, but it would be done. Through the state. Right. I just think we need some clear cut direction so that everybody knows what they want when these things come up. I mean, this yeah. is not the, the last time someone's going to come to us with high density apartments or some sort of a twin home. And when we see that, I want a set of guidelines that says, okay, this is what we accept as a community. You know, I've, I've heard a number of people in the audience that have said, Hey, I don't like this or I don't like that. This verbiage, though. But at the present time, all that enforce a building code have elected to adopt the same individual codes that make up the state building code. Yeah. So in my mind, that is saying we may adopt something, but at the present, what does that mean? You're not understanding. So no. Let me help clarify. I will. Every town can adopt an addendum. Yes. That can be more strict, but not less strict mm -hmm. than what's required. And it can outline some of the specific details that are wanted within yes. the specific zone. Okay. Am I, so am I explaining that correctly? Yes. Am I using the right language? So, so the last time the forest did to have a full laundry list of changes, I think we did it in May. Did the ordinances, these ordinances, I don't buy this. Okay, so I'll go along with that, that that's something we look at in the future, but here and now we have to kind of go on what we have. Uh, right yeah, right now I'm kind of, I think we no, I agree, we'll yeah. put it in the future, but for the here and now, um, I guess for me, I don't feel we need to have the elevators in there. I'd rather have the building look like that for this one. I don't see a need for it. We got, got the units on the, we get some units on the floor that we can use for on the main floor that we can be used for say elderly or whatever but for you know you're still pretty mobile i'm not gonna worry about you <laughs> but i'm just saying that that will suffice for now but again we are going to be looking after a senior living facility that'll be helpful on that as well so a senior living facility what does that mean? What's a facility? It's it's is that like you're saying a nursing home? Mm, no, just think of like Eventide, something like that. Assisted living. assisted living, something like that. So, any other comments, questions, concerns? We're still in the public. No, we're still in the public hearing. Okay. So I'm asking. <laughs> Um, anything on the rezone or the planning unit development? Anybody, anywhere? Okay, Lucas, I'm going to close the public hearing on all three of these then. All right. So, I'll come to decision time. What do you guys want to do? We can do these all at once or we can do them in one at a time. Well, all right then. Okay. So we'll start with the plat then. Anybody got any concerns about that? Well, I don't support the project, so I don't know if we're if we're separating them out. I'm just letting you all know that. Okay. So. That's fine. Any other questions on plat? Otherwise, I'm going for a motion to either accept or or what? Anybody? Okay. 
Okay, I'll ask one more time. Anybody want to make a motion or no? Okay. Yep, go ahead, Russ. If you don't do this now, based on what the economy is doing, you won't what? You won't get any. You won't get one. So this plaque is the one talking about the elevators versus non-elevators, correct? Oh, this is just the land for the oh, result. This is just the land. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. for that, for the land. The landscaping that's outlined. Setbacks. Right now, we're literally just talking about that. Just the council rather discuss the green and rezone. We can. But you guys tell me. We can go either way on that. If you want to either talk about the rezone first, that's fine. Can I just ask you don't support the entire project because of traffic or what's your essentially I don't like yeah I mean I just don't support because of traffic it's going to be pushed on a cast 17. I think in our comprehensive plan it was more and we spent you know a lot of time on the plan I understand also when this plan was created 76 was anticipated to be an interstate access I mean I realize we're going to have the other access there but it would have to me, it would have been better traffic flow if that had been the interstate interchange. And I think that in the picture, we have the compact residential around this side. I'd like to see the rest of this area left for commercial. And those are, those are my thoughts. So I'll, I'm going to be honest how that fl fits de directly into the plat and the rezone vote. I guess I'm maybe not completely uh, sure on that, but. Um, I'm sure I'm going to know on the rezone and the plan development unit. The plat. If I voted yes on the plat, what would that do? It's yes it's already platted, right? Well, it's pre platting already platted ground. So basically, you would be taking. Because what is it currently platted at? I mean, are you just saying the designation of C two? No, you're changing lots. You bring out some, bring out some lots, and then changing lot lots. Okay, because I did see one. Uh, and maybe maybe this isn't even it. I did see this in the packet. Do you know what this? Is? Yeah, maybe I'm not reading it right. But right, this is some other residential down there. That's just smaller units down there in the bottom. Okay. And you said a traffic study that. You don't have on the screen right now. It's yeah. done with this entire area. It was done with the full build out with assumed users. Uh, or <coughs> what's currently built. Future built. Did mm -hmm. it take into account? Build it all in a in that traffic study. I gave some space. And the proposed and completion of these time. buildings. The proposed completion of these buildings would be done after the road has been finished paved or finished being paved between uh, 45th Street at 52nd Avenue. They would finish that prior to completion yeah. of your buildings. We're thinking around the 18 months. Still out. Yep. Or all five. I read November of 2023. Is that still correct? Yep. Or? yep. I mean, I'll just, yeah. So technically the road should be done. all done by then. Yeah. Okay. The plan is if the connection isn't made from 52nd to 64th by Fargo, that we would leave, leave here, go to 45th, go north to 64th, and move on 64th mm -hmm. to get out. Because they'll have that done. East, oh, yeah. east, yeah, east or west on 64th? East. east. Coming out, coming out closer. But to that's Walmart. just going over the interstate, correct? No, no. Coming mm. out closer to Walmart. 64. They'll have multiple. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about 64th Avenue. Because I'm sorry. So 64th yes. Avenue, east. 
to the North interstate. It'll be a couple north. Okay. I have. We are going to have a way out of here next next year going that way. That's. They guaranteed that because of the roads. Because they're going to have to replace the, the bridge. Yeah. They have to and replace the both it. bridges, don't they? No, they're just going to replace the Cheyenne. The Cheyenne and the 52nd. They're so. replacing the uh, going to work on 52nd. Yep, and the and Cheyenne. That area there, bridge or the Cheyenne. So we're all going to have to go. And they'll yeah. be addressing the intersection of the 60th. Yeah. So those three projects. Yeah. If these buildings wouldn't be built, but probably those construction projects have been. They're all done. done. Yeah. yeah. The ballpark to build. So if they get the footings down, you're lucky to be done by the end of next year. Jim, what's the completion schedule? Sixty-six. And so again, that would be over. Up to sixty, up to sixty-fourth or beyond. Okay. And then it's gravel right now. So what's happening with with 64? 64. 64 is gravel. Yes. Okay. So any more conversation on flat rezone? Any more talk? <clears throat> Where are we at now? The two are going to go hand in hand. Pretty much. Okay. So, do we want to make a motion to accept the plat? I'll make a motion to accept the plat. Okay. Just makes a motion. Can I get a second? I'll second. Okay. Let me does a second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Okay. On the rezone, then, so we want to take that. This is rezoning the PUD, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, motion. Okay, Jeff makes a motion on the rezone. Can I get a second on that? Yeah, I'll second that. Okay, third is a second. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. All right, when we get down to the brass tacks here, plan unit development. What do you guys want to do? Want to make a condition on it? Just do it. What I would recommend on this one, if we're going to do this, is that we do this, but we remove the requirement of the elevator. That would be my recommendation to you guys. So, Where, how about we do this on this first file? Look at accepting buildings as shown. Move the requirement of the but we direct cities back. No, no that's fine. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to see anything else going on the elevator act without having that. Because it puts us in a really sticky right. situation. But it also is to make sense to put an elevator in it too, depending upon what it is. I mean, that's what we got to look I at that too. Out of an elevator day and age. Just saying. I don't know what I don't know what the codes are like with uh, West Fargo and Fargo. I don't know what they do. That would be well, something to look at. Actually, never lived in an apartment building that had an elevator. I don't disagree on the zoning. Well, the option to make a recommendation for an elevator or a PUD. I'm struggling with authorizing anything other than their recommendation. I don't know how that they can do that.
I'm listening to the rest of Bill's so how you guys feel and how the rest of the community feels me trying to No, I understand. I mean if we could if if we didn't have the help this or this, I mean I and just that is worse. I go back to uh, Russ's comment though. Would you rather have a building that um does not look very good with a flat roof? Or would you rather have a building that looks good? Well, and this is where I default to this is the tactic we're gonna use every single time we don't get what we want. I understand. Because I have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. I agree. I do too. But we are here now, and if we go through this exercise this way when they put together the requirements or whatever we want to do as far as an addendum then we're not going to be dealing with this in the future sure. but we are here now so we have to make a decision one way or another based upon what we know at this point so jeff naomi what do you guys think Well, because there's a if this then this I mean I'm tempted to go against the planning commission is that's my opinion I don't know how everyone else is yeah. Russ you're still gonna sleep okay tonight if we do that I'm think yeah again I understand where you guys came from I do understand that that's just But I also think going forward, we'll this will be settled science. It just isn't right now. So make a motion then to go ahead and hold it as submitted and directing city staff to prepare an addendum encompassing the requirements Elevated. All right, do you get all that? Yep. Okay. Second. Sarah made a motion. Jeff did a second. Um, I'll roll call this one just so we make sure we're all on the same page. Sarah? Yes. Naomi? Yes. Stephanie? No. Jeff? Yes. Okay. Moving on. Number 11, Jim. What we got on that one? All right, change order was requested from the Columbia Road construction and the Gabby Mark of Casey's and Department of Time for the project is parcel and Mark of Casey's is owned by the Gas County Highway Department. That parcel is now being used in the city of Florida for the construction of St. Benedict Avenue. Due to the proximity to the Ace Lake View Edition project, the Florida City Council decided to construct the avenue via change order rather than re. Advertise the project for business. So, the foot underground provided estimate of $585,000 for another $38.18. Time extension October 15, 2022, to construct the change order work. The estimate from the order is $607,800. Okay. Staff being said, I recommend approving the change order and the time extension to allow for the construction of St. Avenue Benedict for the cases from Honey Road 17 East. To the existing or to what is now the St. Benedict's Avenue leading towards the church. Okay. Pull up the dollar amount. 585, 730. <coughs> Given where we're at, we can go over right now. How far, how, how far is that road? Just give me a ball 
it's to finish from where they currently are up to the 17 marker, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are they going to be able to get on that? Like, OK. You said the estimate was in line. Was reasonable. Yeah, but that broke your heart, huh? Yeah. OK, any other discussion on this one, guys? I think I agree we should get on with this so we can get this done this year. We want to make a motion. Set the change order. Make a motion. OK. And can I get a second? Sure, I'll second. All right. Yeah, Jeff and Naomi. All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. OK, motion carries. Let's go on to 12. Jim, you got this one too. Well, to, just a heads up for the council, because I think you guys previously directed my office to draft an easement and an agreement for right. cases. Yep. So I'll get that sent as their representative now for review and kind of online. OK. Thank you. Next item we have is the Council of Farms 2. All right. Valuation proposal is presented by the contractor and developer, which is Andrew to Main in Improvement District 2020 7 Council of Farms 2 edition. Um, right now, the Sanders are depth within the fifth edition, but it's designed to accommodate. Large service area as possible for the existing Southdale Farms switch station, existing switch station, specifically the Adelman Edition in Morris, which is currently, or specifically the Adelman Edition in Morris, which is currently served by the private sector for the areas accommodated with this design. Due to unfavorable soils in. That's a pleasant way to put it, unfavorable. I can think of other adjectives I could use for that. Mm hmm. You know, it's family friendly of Mount. So you are all given <coughs> this map mail earlier today. Mm -hmm. I will just describe it since that's fairly easy to fit into this. So, as you can see here, we have existing sanitary sewer out on 70th Avenue to a neighbor of approximately. 880 The plan was to bring the sanitary sewer through the Southdale Farms 5th edition back up to 66 and extend it down to 88. There is some sanitary sewer down by where Russ lives that isn't deep enough to get all the way over into the Adelaide edition. So the sand vein runs pretty much right in this part of the world. And if you do look at the Southern report, it says you can get out of it. They haven't been able to dig out of it yet. It's about the burying and excavator last time. So um, this was very costly, as I talked about in the memo here. Due to unfavorable soils in the area, the developers concerned about the additional cost to construct this sewer, uh, mostly because it is expensive and it does benefit an area that potentially is outside of the district boundary. So, dewatering and other construction methods uh, would fit into the project that would increase the cost. Contrary to proposed raising the sanitary sewer approximately six feet to get through the very sandy, silty soils by reducing by reducing the depth of the sewer, service area is therefore reduced and an acre may not be serviced by gravity sanitary sewer from the South Hill Farms lift. Um, another lift station would have to be constructed in this part of the world down here, closer to 76th Avenue and grade 27, just because it falls off so quickly. That's going to have to go in no matter what. <laughs> and this would also be our point far over the final flush. Mm -hmm. This so that one you're pointing to right now, we would make a little bit bigger. Yeah, this one would be a, would be accommodated for the yeah. remainder of the city, but yep. there's going to have to be one over here. If okay. You stretch it and get to about here comfortably. <coughs> so, um, directed uh, this location design to extend the gravity sewer to Adelman if requested. Um, the problem with that is the timeline for this additional center to <coughs> Unknown. 
it. We don't have a real good timeline as to when this area is going to be mm -hmm. at a preliminary meeting, kind of a concept meeting. I don't know if there's any time frame as to when that's going to be. Allen Edition was constructed in 15, oldest lots were in 15, so those septic are now about five, six, seven years old. So there haven't been any issues. There, I guess there was one. It was a leaky septic, although it was, was corrected. But um, this area, I don't know what the interest is for extending gravity sewer, or we might just be better off with the lay gravity system, or not gravity, on the low pressure systems. So um, the deduct would be approximately $390,000. And we got that in the form here from the contractor. So I just wanted to run it by you. I wanted to give you just to let you know what's going on. Chris is here. You can answer some questions. Like this was something that they were pursuing just because special assessments in that area were pretty, pretty hefty in their, in their eyes in comparison to the other additions of the Southfield Farms. We expect the new watering and the bigger wall pipe plus the excavations to get to that point. So um, I don't have any like a timeline as to when Edelman addition would be hooked up. It's always been in the back of my mind getting sewer to that area just because the second thing is going to have to be replaced or they're going to fail at some point. So um, just a matter of I want to make sure we're balancing this contract of convenience with what could be the city in the long run. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sir, have you guys has there been much chatter out there about there hooking up? The concern, and I'll have, I, I am not sure about your opinion, so this is just discussion, but um, the concern is that everything is going up on us being built, and there are no accommodations to correct some of the issues that they and so we had a discussion about it. Jim and I did, just because I don't want it to fall off the road. What I don't want to happen is similar to the environment where things got built up around them and they back down. Just want to that were overlooked and it's standalone costs of that development where things could be rolled into other areas. You know, we're already getting hit in the for assessment district. Let's just add another one to extend pipe now instead of within a couple hundred feet of our development we have to go three quarters of a mile mm -hmm. away you know it's a big difference and so um i don't disagree i know there's sandpaper there. i did it myself i know what difficulty it is to get through. i know that costs are an issue right you don't want to have to extend those costs onto your residents but I want to ensure that the proper attention is being placed on future projects when they do that other area that then this is included. If there's a change in personnel or whatnot, I don't want this to be lost in translation. Yeah. So I, I, I want some sort of a, a direction given here that if we accept this change order, we don't do this, that we can ensure that the Adam addition is caught into future project because our folks with the larger lots there are just staying on their own. <laughs> and it's getting, it is getting. getting. What, so, what is, oh, go ahead. So, Jim, we, I mean, what you're looking at here, you know, with this change, I mean, that would accommodate what we're talking about here or could potentially accommodate what she's talking about. In the future, we have. In the future. Yeah. So, we have to have provisions. Yeah, okay. So the, the nice thing about this is that there's basic costs in the So you could grab it. Yeah. Do you have to go through private property to get that though? So that's where it comes into the pie. You have to make sure that this gets applied with respect to easements. If you needed to, you, know, you could catch something along the back side. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more tricky in the middle. That's kind of what I meant, the backside of that one. Yeah, and that's where some of this inevitably might have to be a little pressure pump. Take the tank out, put a garden pump in, no pressure, just bring it to our gravity system. You just got to remember, 
this developer doesn't want to do it because there's added cost. The next developer isn't going to want to do it because there's added cost. So that's where we're going to be stuck on an island. And there's been people in this room sitting on that island before, and it sucks. That's what I was going to. So, what is the current assessment district for the project they're going to proceed with? So, with the, in, this project, it's pretty much just this area that is the key information. All new development? All new development, but it doesn't include the island. When the okay. district was created for this, yep. there wasn't, it wasn't anticipated to have that significant of a cost to extend that to rail and pick this up, take it a block and a half and do. Well, then when we got the bids and there was water in the uh, excavation through that sand vein. And the, the contractor that did the buried excavator up here doing the lift station that ultimately got moved west, he's the one that said, this is pretty scary, scary soil. Yeah, and that was right. Mm -hmm. So basically in that assessment district, it's it's all new development. It's going to basically be a deduct of what 390,000. However, it's not going to encompass the area that that Sarah is thinking about. Yeah, and they wouldn't um, be getting assessed any of the bridge. So Adelman wouldn't get assessed any of It'd be kind of almost That's like a start over new new project at some point in the future. Yes. Okay. assessment. There's a big difference going a block and a half on the extension versus having to run a pipe all the way down and across. And then into your each yard. Yep. It'd be very expensive. Yeah. Yeah. So we do that this county here and then pay for it later. I mean it's just it's okay. Anything else on that one? You guys want to approve the change order? Yeah, if Jim, if that's your recommendation, I I'll motion it. I, I wanted to get the opinion of those that are in that area, so I mean, we all see where we're coming. It's, yeah, I mean, as long as Sarah, I mean, Sarah's directly. I, I don't want to be like it. I want that pipe going in. <laughs> and, and I don't care if you're going to add me into a district or whatever. I mean, that's going. So that's that's a question that we can't ask. We can't rule. That's kind of like, so. Oh, you know, I'm not fully I'm not fully understanding this this situation. I think it's in this uh, um you can't, so what area would you be tagged into in the future? Well, we all know, and that's the thing. But do you have concern about septic in your neighborhood? Mm -hmm. I have, we have homes that have been there since the 70s and we're fine. In the There's a lot of people who don't want to be on septic. They okay. want to get on. Do they recognize what the cost? I mean, it sounds good, but do they recognize the cost? Oh, okay. That was very cost prohibitive for our neighborhood. Okay. So right now, the district is in cost cash area. And what? We're finding is that four hundred thousand dollars of this isn't necessary for that. It's this, and this is outside the district. That's outside of the district. Mm -hmm. so, so they would be getting the benefit without receiving any assessment for it. The burden would fall back on this. So this is still a very good candidate for low pressure drainage system. It's the least invasive and. It still can go up to here because the sanitary sewer <coughs> have to give it to something on six. It'll be right there. Getting it down here, just if it'll be there, you'll just be shot. So you might have some trouble getting it to this point. Not to say we can use it. It all just depends on a lot of ifs and buts. We're going to continue discussion on this for the time being. Okay. I have no problem making a motion to accept the change order. Most definitely did. I did. So. I mean, I'll, I would retract it. No, because no, I don't know that I fully understood the issue. No, I'm so sorry. I misunderstood. Go ahead. Okay. So, yep. Mm -hmm. Stephanie's made the motion. Who wants to do a second? So I might as well do the second. There we go. All right. So all in favor, say aye. 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 
motion carries. Jim, you got the other one, so till right. fourth. Okay, so this is for water source for Missouri Improvement District number 20.2-6, South Dale Farmers Fourth Edition, specifically the borrow material. Um, South Dale Farmers Fourth Edition requires approximately 80,000 cubic yards of borrow material. Price bid for the borrow is $15 per cubic yard. Original source for the borrow is the Southwest Metro Regional Bond located north of 64th Avenue and west of 45th Street. Um, we have an agreement with Fargo for that material coming out of that pond and that was approved by the city of Fargo. That's the The developer has sourced the borrow material and would like to supply the material to the prime contractor for placement. They are good with that. Uh, this would result in a $3 per cubic yard price decrease. The revised unit price $12 per cubic yard. As part of this, Route 64th Avenue would be the one to be utilized. Christian Boulevard, which is a concrete robust section, mm -hmm. all coming off 117. Now, Christensen, into the project, placing the material where it needs to be put on the ground. So, this would be a net, I mean, roughly $220,000 of savings with the $3 card reduction price. So far, I've talked to the contractor. They have all the couple loads out there just to kind of see what they can do with the energy that they're getting. Have they any concerns? Other than my concern is just you're going to get ran into the metro. It's going to be consistent. Is it going to be good? They put it on the floor. What they've seen so far is fine. They've also got the very much. It's just slot. Are they looking for the fat clay? Is that what they're looking for? Put down? Okay, so they're going down to get it. Okay. So what what we got to the table about was that if you're digging a basin, your stockpiling material somewhere out say this third edition, but the same thing is using the fourth edition. It's just a matter of can it get there in the sequence that our construction is. Well, that's convenient and mm -hmm. brainless. <laughs> it may be an uninformed question, but what is the material being used for? Raisins. The entire site? Yes. So Perfect. is this, so I just, if you could explain, I guess I just don't know how it works. Is it, I mean, we have an assessment district for water, sewer, and road infrastructure in that area, but how is the city involved in getting the material just for the general development? So, so, so typically, it's contractor sourced. Contractors have to find the material in the site. Okay. During this, this is a total million dollars. This is a very good project. A lot of questions from the beginning as to where do we get 80,000 yards? So, in that process of bidding the project, I don't know where anyone they could. And so when we're calling the city of Fargo, we're trying to call us and say, well, you have the pond there. You get the spirit that's there all over. Well, as part of that, it's 64 that we use as a indicator, which is of a gravel road. The residence is on. It's a dirt road when you get into part of it. So then it's going to have to be some things and whatever else. So by using contractor or a developer supply material coming off Main Street, that is built to handle this concrete street. The exception, not impacting the gravel roads or the dirt roads. And we can bring the site up to make sure it creates adequate needs. Is that part of this the special assessment? Yeah. Just yeah. doing okay. I just yeah. wasn't I wasn't aware no. that so this is those are, I just I wonder if you mind the council that sat here when we were mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This is exactly why we wanted it to be concrete instead of asphalt. Mm -hmm. And now it's paying the difference was minimal and it's paying for itself in the long run. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that. There's not a school in there. There's no buses traveling up there yet. But this right here pays for the difference. 
Yep. So I, I got a question from high level. Um, why the three dollar decrease? Now, what what's the benefit of it? Um, also, I, I asked Brandon this earlier. I mm -hmm. um, for this one, Chris, I was able to purchase clay for two fifty or last borrow delivered. Um, what's the benefit? That seems like a pretty high cost. So I'm just trying to figure out what's buried in that cost. Always spread. Is it the spreading as well? Um, at eight. Um, and then the additional cost was uh, for the Dakota to handle the material in place. Places. And the uh, The material that we got stores, um, we're getting numbers kind of all over the place so we can get that cheaper material, but then to get it on, on the dates we need, we're going to pay more for it too. There's more demand. A lot of people now, um, we need to play at a certain site, um, it's on some of our other uh, sites. Yeah. It's $12 for it. Uh, no, so, I agree. Fuel is so, I was curious as to what else is. How much extra there is, I'm going to put that money again. But, um, but just on the $3 deduct, I was hoping I'm on four, but it ended up being three. It's still a considerable amount. Um, it'll, it'll take down each lot out there around uh, $1,600. Um, so if you're going to get it down and pull it, you say, no, not that the same thing to be sold by the third, and you over 38, and you can do that. You can get it far down as you can, and this is one of the options that we pay some dollars off. Okay, any other questions, comments on that one? Jim, while we're on it, you just give us a construction status. Um, we'll... Started today. Started with the deep sewer today. So Did, we are okay. going to be on one crew this week, two crews next week, or the following week. We're going to be west to east. <coughs> And then uh, Clay is coming in on Suspicious Boulevard. Good. Cool. All right, so back to the change order. Anybody got any other questions about those? Okay, Jeff makes a motion. Can I get a second? I will second. Do me a second? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Middleware Park, Brent. Special assessments tied to Metal Arts Park. So, a while ago, please correct me if I'm wrong. The development the city now owns the park, technically. There are special assessments on the park, and the park district should take it over, take over the park as their park. And they've asked the council if they would say that they would waive the principal and interest as approved, which is a total of. $8,346.36. If the council would waive that, they would pay off the special, if the special is there due, then we could deed that park to the park district. So that way it gets the ownership of the park district that you're responsible for all the cost of special assessments. Mm -hmm. 
Why, why are we doing this? So, uh, you know, close. <laughs> so what happened was lost for her, lost for her second son. That's a lot for metal art part. It's dedicated to the public, which means it should have been dedicated to the city at that time. The intent was for it to be to the park. It never <coughs> Development has owned it for uh, five years now. I think mean, Philosopher was on in 2017, so we're going to have uh, And so they weren't paying the specials on it because they thought it was the city or the park district's lot. And so then the county approached <laughs> us to the city saying that Jack's been trying to work on this yeah. for. Not a year, but close to it with the county. The county would not accept that money did not want it. So then the city got involved. We had to say that that again to the public so that it is the city's lot that the plow was going to get on the plan. They wanted a separate document, a deed or something, but in North Dakota, you can transfer property on a plat or the other deed. So in this instance, and similar to many other plats, the dedicated time dedicated. I didn't accept that until I got involved, came up and said, yes, that was intent. This is supposed to be dedicated to the public. And so that's why years later, now I don't know why it took four years for <laughs> the developer to, to bring it to us. Yes, to bring it to the attention of the county uh, and then the city. But so anyway, for us to, to make this work, we had to say that the city actually owns that. Lot. Even and though it city, was dedicated to the public. Note to self, we don't dedicate to the public anymore, right? No, they won't accept okay. that it's dedicated to the park district. So, okay. And we put a lot more scrutiny on plants, obviously. They're doing a lot. Well, it says dedicated to the public for a park, but whatever. It, it's now it. under the ownership of the city. The city would like to transfer it to the park district. The park district agrees to pay all special money. To no fault of them. They didn't know. They didn't know. Meaning the city just picks up that amount and then it's transferred. It just goes away. Yeah. We just waive the principal yeah. on the trust And again, maybe it's, but um, I mean, there's special assessments assessed to, I mean, it's just. The the county's county's just okay, the county just. Okay, because the county was involved yeah. because the deed was listed. So, what we do is if the council okay. waived the interest in companies, they approved that, and the park district to go and pay off the mm -hmm. amount of special oh, right now, the balance is owed. And then and the they get current. Okay. And then we'd be able to deed the land to the park district because okay. the county will not let us deed the land to the park district without the special so we're trying to clean this all. And it's it's no I mean there's no financial part. No financial part is something that the county misinterpreted on the flags and fixing it now. Just making it right on paper. Yes. Yeah. And so uh, my recognition that is also <coughs> have us execute that deed with part of the city execute it. So we get that recorded and make that transfer official. Motion to X to oh, wave it's, first wave the principal wave the principal and interest and um, the, penalty. the penalty and interest. Oh, you do have principal and interest. Yeah, yeah. penalty and interest and um, execute the deed properly with the city county. And the okay. Sarah makes a motion. Can I get a second on this one? Second. Jeff is a second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. Lucas, you got 15 here. Yes, Mr. Mayor. So another cleanup item. Uh, tough precondition. The city ended up splitting that lot with the park district. The city needed a portion of it for a storm uh, sewer lot. We never did a second reading on that. So this is just the. <coughs> and nothing changed from reading one to reading two? And Jace pulled it up there on the screen to see if it's the reference. Okay. This is another one too. And being nothing changed, I would say <coughs> to accept the second. Yes. 
second reading. I will make a motion to accept the second reading of the rezone of, what did I say, Cub Creek Edition, Lot 1, Lot 6. There you lot go. Six. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Okay. And we made the motion, Stephanie, to second. So all in favor say aye. 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 Oh, I'm sorry, I. There you go. All right, everybody's in. Motion carries. Mystic foul. Steve, you got the second reading. Nothing's changed, I assume. No, unchanged. Unchanged, actually. Oh, come on. You the city did not make me on bees. The century code is not very specific <clears throat> on keeping a bees or beekeeping in the city. So what I did is I looked at what other jurisdictions have done. But they have for the city for allow beekeeping in forests. No. <laughs> It is no, that a lot of this was, was not necessary. Um, <laughs> some other jurisdictions have held that if city's ordinances are silent as to beekeeping, um, then they, the beekeeping is not in the city as no reason However, that, that should be done in the city limits. It's going very popular. There's a lot of reasons. Uh, the century code does um, and someone getting a license, you go through, it's actually the North Dakota Ag Commissioner that handles licensing for beekeepers in North Dakota. Mm -hmm. And it does reference in there that if the hive is kept in a city, that they have to provide their lot, lot uh, and address. So, Do they also provide insurance in case a neighbor happens to get stung by a bee and has an anaphylactic that's emergency all, reaction? This dies? Provides for cities as it says that. So I don't want that liability. Well, then why'd you guys have them added in here? I wasn't here. I don't. I don't no. recall that. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure that keeping prohibited, not added. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they for every six months we look into research the bees. Research the bees. I wasn't here. Our ordinance is up to speed so that beekeeping is left to <coughs> the farms and not within city limits. I think that there's a time and a place for beekeeping. I thoroughly believe that bees are an integral part of our society for farming and pollinating and things like that. However, I don't believe that large scale beekeeping needs to happen within city limits. I may be a standalone person. There may be people here that disagree with me, but I'm deathly afraid of the liability of beekeeping within city limits in the event of something like I just mentioned, the, a, a severe anaphylactic reaction. You have no idea who has What could reactions. happen to the city if something did happen to a person? Well, it would be on whoever owns the house. The, house. the yeah. city has its ordinances in place. And in this ordinance, there would be setbacks and a number of hives that you can have on the property. If the city wanted, you can restrict what zones that you could actually have hives in. So the city wanted one in the integrated zones or the uh, lower density residential zones, those larger lots. Um, you can certainly do that. The city doesn't want bees. I think the option is just to do nothing uh, and just leave it silent because then it's not a permitted or a conditioning use. In the city of Morris, and that's like I said, what other jurisdictions no. have done. West Fargo allows um, these in its city. Their ordinance was uh, maybe one major that was a little too vague. I mean, just kind of what North Florida has done. But this one, like I said, it looked at other jurisdictions that they've done. You know, not it's more requirements or conditions that if someone is actually going to have no. lives in the city of business. When we discussed at the last meeting, remember with the other items, 
that there was a, was it a variance or what did you call it for certain size? Like okay, so I mean that, I mean that option is available, like we said, for larger lots of things. Maybe we're just silent, silent on the, on the B thing. Someone, somebody wanted to try to get a conditional use permit for a larger lot. Then we'll just look at it then. It, it's very different if a person has 13 acres or whatever versus, you know, a, a standard city lot which <coughs> is a quarter or a third of an acre. You know, I, I think that there's some reality in accepting that, but I, I don't know how to write that. And that's more or less what. Well, that would be you go <coughs> and, and use it that way and, and look at your larger. Did you say it was only like available in like suburban? Or what did you call it? Again? Suburban rural. There you go. Suburban. That was the only place for conditioning permit for the other yeah. items. Okay, that's what I was getting at. Yeah. Yeah, and so like other things sure. that you know, the United States have done with in terms of um, bees in urban areas is they call them flyways, where they put them in front of the hive and it forces the bees to actually. Up and so away from everything. So that's something that's referenced in here. So if you do have a higher density area or you're concerned that the bees are too close to people that you have the uh, applicant install a flyway and force the bees to go to the top instead of just one or two meters. I'm just wondering if we're going to do something like this, though. Yeah, I know where you're coming from, but with the same restrictions that we have on livestock. Would be very few people that can still do this. Yeah, I, I, and that, that's what I'm saying. It's, it, the council can do that. So right yeah, now, I so don't have it limited to any certain underlying zoning district. The council only wants it in egg district. It can do that. It can do egg and sort of residential, <laughs> like the counties. It can have it. You know, we don't have bees, and we said just stay wow. silent to it. And that's the argument that other jurisdictions have made. There is more reference to bees because we can't do it in our city. My only concern is the central does reference city in chapter for the SSP. So I, I don't know if someone would have that that argument that it's referenced in central code so with the city. You can certainly put in language that restricts or prohibits these city. Okay, question. Um, it's actually been asked to the uh, honeybees are not going to be aggressive because they're not going to go and speak to people. They're going to stay relatively close to the hive that they took from size. And so, they're relatively small. So, I mean, there's consideration of size. So, you know, it's not aggressive. Either. No, I get it. And, and that's. Totally fine and dandy, but that's exactly what I don't want to get into is right. size of hives, how close they have to be to the house, flyways, all that other stuff. I want people to know that if you want to keep bees, you need to know what you know and you need to have a place to do it. Well, right? But he wrote it all in here. Yeah, so. I know. And that's not what I don't There's want to be attached. There's different reasons that you can do So I did. Also, if if the uh, the colony is aggressive or they have uh, habits of staying or swarming, the applicant is uh, required to re-clean colonies. If you need to clean bee that is more docile, you have to go the wrong way. I don't know. Research. <laughs> Well, I wasn't here, so you can't blame me for all your questions. You can't to a level beyond anything. I have to have an Right. So, I mean, that, that is part of some of the difficulty we have and some of the problems that we have with our city is that we put this level of detail in some of our ordinances and the average person is like, what, what do I have well, if to you do? you read it, it's, I think it's very straightforward um, when you read through the ordinance. And my concern here is I didn't want it to be something that was paying like the state had because then it's, it's free throw. Yeah. Well, and what do you guys want? 
that was the you want to be I don't have the. I don't have a. Yeah, we're going to make a mention. Yeah, we're going to also make a mention. Again, there is a thing. We don't know if we what we're talking about with this suburban residential. <laughs> I don't care what this is. <laughs> if right. they need their honey, they're going to get I, I just, I want to stipulate that it has to be on the suburban residential site for, for RD plots that we're not just going to allow beekeeping in any way, fashion, shape, or form, especially in like Southdale Farms or Cub Creek where these houses are right next to each other. You just I don't think that makes any sense. Regardless of whether bees are docile or not. Right. So does, I mean do any of our farmers there's a lot of people that do beekeeping and and yeah. Yeah. And there's actually a large right. I didn't know any of our that is big right now. I don't know if anybody has it, but it's included as no, the and, others. And that location and that purpose is phenomenal. And I think it's perfect. I don't think that people, you know, need to be doing that and say, I'm going to hide in my. Seriously, if you want to do keeping and chickens and horses and all this other stuff, get a lot bigger than to do it on the I mean, a lot I really don't All right. have to. Yeah. Yeah, kind of so what does this say? It basically says the definitions of what these are. It says everything that you were concerned about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The second reading, then how do you go back? Shutting my I don't really have a preference either way, honestly, about the bees. That's my opinion. When I live next to someone, <clears throat> it's not completely prohibiting without the confidence. The purpose of this was to restrict where they can go so it's not free for all in the city parks. And so there is a process that's outlined. So there is an application that when someone comes to see it all, they just spell it out. And so there is. <laughs> And that was probably the point was to make sure that we did have jurisdiction over what was going on. Correct. So the permits Certainly. would be there. So nothing, we probably didn't venture as far. But, I mean, it, it might didn't even have to go this far. Yeah. Yeah, Possibility of just adding bees up in the unlawful section, knowing then that it falls in with all of the other animals. Where if a person had a certain zoning, 
they could ask for a conditional use permit to get them. From a missing point. I mean, right. Says SRFJ, they reference that you can have these animals in. So we would change those two to allow bees. I'm just wondering, we could maybe treat bees the same that we're going to treat all the other animals, say, for certain zoning areas. If somebody wanted to have a bigger lot, they could come and ask us. But knowing that we're keeping our animals in bees out of basically what are our, our city residential lots. Mm -hmm. I think the, the quicker option is just to add this? a reference in here that just okay. says you can only have that's how that makes sense. Okay. Done. Okay. There you go. I'll make that motion. Okay. And I'm just going to second that. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 There you go, Lucas. Now we're all squared away on this one, though, so just add that and we're good. Thank you, Lucas. Yeah, Lucas, this was pretty amazing. Good work. I don't know how to answer it pretty good. Lucas, that was very impressive. I'm still looking my woman over here. Uh, yeah. All right, let's move along so we're not here till midnight. Next. Jeez, can you bring that up so we've got the numbers? <laughs> All right, so this is uh, part of a conversation we had back in January or February. I think we were talking about this. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to come up with a way to preserve the history of Horace. Uh, <coughs> the group out of Canada that came highly recommended by multiple sources to be able to come up with some type of historical book for the town. Um, the town has done historical um, or history uh, in, a, in books in the past. Um, the city obviously has grown a little bit since the last time they did this. Uh, what we were looking for was a way to be able to have a publisher be able to do this. Uh, again, like we were talking about, the guys came from Canada after talking to different places. This type of work. There's been some very impressive books put together <clears throat> by this firm. So that's why I brought this to the council back in January, trying to think of uh, getting this put together. We've got a fairly aggressive timeline right now to try and get this done. Um, I believe they want Sally, refresh my memory. They said they needed to have all of our stuff in by next May to have this ready for our 150th. So that doesn't give us a lot of time. But um, I just want to fill everybody in too on that conversation. We, as a council, wanted the uh, <clears throat> wanted Sally to look into American. Remember, I, American, I distinctly yeah. remember American-made books. And in that conversation, it just Sally, if you could just kind of explain why that's not even really possible at this time. Um, because they did kind of explain a little bit as to why it's not going to work that way. And um, one of the companies said they actually have it printed in Korea, South Korea, Korea. Um, and he said, I could find something, but it's really interesting that, you know, it wouldn't work. Yeah. Um, and I thought it. And, and then he brought up this company yeah, again. He said, he said, so that's kind of why we're back here again. Um, I, I had a couple people reach out to me and 
to how much it's going to cost the city to get these books published and if there's any way that we can possibly like have people just order them and repay instead of buying a bunch of books um up front does that make sense um, by one of the other publishers um he had said that sometimes they'll get a what kind of cost are we looking at here? So it's talking about prices per pages. How many pages were we thinking? Um, I thought it would be a lot smaller, more like 100 to 150 pages. Right. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't, I wasn't at that 150. I was at, um, well, I was, but I was virtual. I didn't know how much she had um, as far as history and if that, like how many pages we would have, you know? We did a lot of pages. Um, and with the old books that were done, so I could condense some of those. Um, and then I was great in the whole one since 1997. Um, Are we going to do a recipe section? <laughs> I'm just asking. Every centennial book that I've ever gotten from my dad's hometown has a recipe <laughs> section, and I use it religiously. Yeah. Well, I guess. Yeah. Oh, that would be neat. Each family I just noticed that the price goes down when you add more pages. So mm -hmm. if we have a section, if you were looking to add pages, if you didn't have enough material, you could. If you have all that history of families, by all means, I like that idea better. Put all that separate and then leave the recipe book for later. We can do that another time. But this, I think, is great. I love the fact that we are honoring our small town's history. Plus, like the, the the older books that we had from like the 75th, 100, and 125th, they have got family lineage in there too. So, I mean, that'd be something mm -hmm. if you could take that and then if there's still people around here to have that family can add to it. So, we get more of the family history of the town and all the new people. And we got a bunch of new people mm -hmm. in it who start with that one here. So, but yeah, to some other way of if we do this. Like putting out forms for people to fill out and, yeah. and get that back to us so we can get that in play because mm -hmm. we, we don't have a hell of a lot of time right now. No, we really are running short on time. Um, I just am just wondering like, is there a way to have them prepaid with the people that want a book? Or do we have to shell out the money? Like, um. I think actually, when we laid it out to me the first time, it's been a while since I looked at it, um, but they have to work. And then maybe we could do a pre order, and then maybe we could just have so many on hand. Right. I mean, just I, a small, small amount. I would think if we got the forms out like soon. Yeah. And got I just told people, like, I'll oh, try and get this back to us as soon as possible. And of course, there's gonna be procrastinators. I Can we that, put but. the form in like the Horace Happenings or something? Um, and then also maybe have a link or something. We probably want to do something online. So it's yeah, easier for a folks. link on the 
database or our city website. But I was thinking. Um, How much does it cost us to do a mailer? I think this is important enough to do a citywide mailing. Seriously, let's do that and mail them here from our local post office. I mean, that would be awesome and set a deadline, you know, set. We'd like this back as soon as possible, but we need it back no later than, you know, whatever November 1st or whatever. And I mean, that to me is the history of our town is very important. And that's something that, you know, on this council, we can forget our place in mm -hmm. where this town came from. And we need to make sure we don't do that, that we acknowledge where mm -hmm. we came from in this town and where we're going in this town. Sally, would it be quicker for people to send it to you via email so you can cut and paste? Or because if they send it to you on a form, somebody's going to have to type that in. That's why I'm trying to think of how we can get the majority of people to do it via email or, or some type of electronics. So and, and otherwise, can, it's going to take time. You can put that link right on the postcard. Mm -hmm. You can and uh, make just, the form electronic, you know, but right. get the word out to everybody. Agreed. No, yeah. that's, that's fine. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of two past communities that are all to the wall and something like this. And I'm trying to bring them to the a level. I think it's a quarter of the books got sold a lot to people who no longer live in the community but had their roots in the community mm -hmm. you know, and had moved to, you know, different areas. Different areas. Yeah, so that's why you promote and I mean, I'm not opposed to having some money, and I just don't want to spend an overly amount of money on folks on hand. And then, you know, at the at the booth at the 150th at our city booth, whatever we can sell them. But um, you know, just to be conscientious of the taxpayer dollars. Mm -hmm. That's my thoughts. I like the pre-order concept. I do too. I love that. Which I think you'd get. You send out the postcards like that, you're going to get people. Yeah, and, and I mean, it makes sense to have have some on hand, but mm -hmm. I mean, you don't need to order them all and send them. You just have to wait and send them. If you do a pre-order form, at least you kind of get a, a general know, idea of the number. Evil because so I was at our high school reunion years last week, and it's amazing. There were still people asking for the book from 15 years ago, or 2000. Mm -hmm. Is they wanted that history book and you know, they only published so many really yeah so it's funny there's people still after the fact still want that mm -hmm. so not saying it's gonna a lot but i'm just saying it is interesting that there's still yeah that much interest after all that span of time so well that's the one thing that every time that one of us has moved those history books i tell yep. you that's the first thing that gets packed up and marked in a box we know where it's at because that's our family you know that's the family oh. tree Okay, so moving along here, should we just have postcards sent out? Everybody can come up with a, a message, come up with a spot mm -hmm. on our website for it. Mm -hmm. um, set that up, and once we have it set up, then we'll put out the postcards and try and get jack up the public involvement and see if we can get this thing going. I think this will be pretty important. Yeah, we need pictures too. That's why the electronics be nice to send. Know, take pictures of what you have, send it via email, and it's easier to get that mm -hmm. in the and book. You're going to have a handful that <laughs> don't use computers, and they're right. going to come in, and they're going to sit down, and they're going to talk to you, and that's okay. <laughs> Sally, are we going to put together a group of people to assist with this? Because this might get to be overwhelming for you. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. So that's what I'm thinking. Let's... Uh, We'll work on that so if we can round up some people to help with this. I know there's people in town here that are quite excited about history. Um, and this will be a way for them to get involved in the well, 150th. I think anybody that's on the 150th can definitely work with you on that. Right. We might want some people to, you know, if they've got time, if they're working on something else, I'm just mm -hmm. saying it to make sure we've got ample staff to make this happen. And so by staff, I just mean a group. What action are you looking for here? 
basically do you with this or not? I do want to proceed with the book. So why don't we find out when he needs a pre-order number? Because that's probably the key. Right now. Table that we need people to get a depth. Then we could maybe start gauging what number of books we need to be looking at if we get fairly good uh, response and that we may be on the upper end. And if we only get 20 people, yeah, you know. Are we going to keep it at the 296 page? Just or how many pages were we thinking? Let's see how many people. So that's going to give us an indicator. And then plus of how many pages do we want to take from the prior books? And like you said, you can condense them. Let's get it. We should probably get an idea of what we're looking at. I don't remember books obviously bigger as they went along. But and I only say that just to price point for people. Yeah. That's my only concern. And like in the in the 75th, 100, 125th, there's some obvious overlap or there's similarities similar stories. Some. Mm -hmm. Okay, then maybe that's what we can decide. If you want to go forward with this, let's make a decision and get us on that docket, I guess is what we're after. So you have to pick a price point now, is what you're saying? Uh, no, it's just, um, you said, um, if we have to sign this one, so what price is this? Okay, well, let's. That's just to get the show started. Yep. Okay. And then we'll work on the uh, format to get a postcard out and then set up on our website. And then once we have a link ready to go, then we can put that on the postcard, get that out, and then put something up on Facebook and just start championing this a little bit more. So, you guys want to? So we want to make a motion that we start and get us get ourselves on the docket. I don't know how you want to put it, but we'll just say we get to reserve a spot with the. Uh, yeah, I can make a motion to reserve a spot with the Fryson agreement okay. signature for the mayor. <laughs> I don't know what to say. That's fine. Okay. Motion to there you go. With Fryson. Okay, so we want to do a second. Okay. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Let's move on. 18. <coughs> Brent, that's you. That's good, right? yeah. I just want to remind you where we're at. Okay. The next item here is regards to a special events permit for big errors. Uh, the request to have a special event on August 12th. Starting at 4 p.m. Um, at the Senior Center. It's a free bill donation. It's a live silent auction. It's raised for Eric Erickson. This art defect is going to be arranged on the art. This is the request is from Biggers. Biggers will be posting that. <coughs> yeah, well, basically, you have the liquor license over yeah, there. Uh, within their application, they do know that a security would be portrayed as a private security. Mm -hmm. And it's typical like what they've done mm -hmm. in the past events. Mm -hmm. Any questions on this one, guys? This is a no-brainer. I, oh. you know I don't know what the article is. 350. 350. They say they're expected attendance is around here. That's what they expect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do they allow liquor sales over there? Mm -hmm. We do it for the ones. No, fire goes over there and <coughs> they charge it. Okay. It's been this would be a special event for that which allows them to sell. Okay. Okay. Do we want to make a motion or more comments? I'd say we do this one because this has been, like I said, done before numerous times. I'll make a motion for to grant the special event permit to Big Herbs for the August 12th, 2022 benefit, the Senior Center. 
Okay. I will second it. And we go second. All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Quick question. Um, yep. Is Aaron's family from here locally? Or how, how do we know? He's a Morehead student. I don't know that student. for sure. All I know is it just says he's a Morehead High School student. Yeah, there's some connection here. I know they talked to and I don't remember what the. I <clears throat> I'm just curious if anybody finds out, send me a text or an email. I just I, I want to know what the connection is. Obviously, we want to support the same man, but I, I'm curious how he's a Moorhead High School student, but we're it, it's happening in Forest. I, I want to know whose family he is. I want to introduce myself to him. I want to, you know, those types okay. of things. All right, we can do that. I'll I'll check on that again. I just don't. And we got brought up in the past. Okay, 19, Brent, you got this. This one is just a fairly high level general discussion in regards to budget. I just had a couple notes here, items to touch base with the city council on in regards to the 2023 budget. Uh, at the next council meeting, you'd have the preliminary budget uh, presented to council consideration. Just so you know, on the preliminary budget, we set the preliminary budget. It's really focusing on the mills. And it's saying you put a cap on it. You can't go any higher than that mill rate, but you can go lower. So we can then still refine the, the preliminary budget to the final budget, and then council has a public hearing and then takes action on the final budget. Uh, that final hearing will occur in September, early late September, early October. Council approved the final budget and we submit to the council. Uh, before December. Um, a couple areas that I want to bring up for council conversation is one is in regards to deputy coverage. We have two deputies. Uh, it's been indicated to me for sure that we could ask for another deputy. No guarantee the county commission would approve it. And if they do, it's a matter of would they be able to fill the position. Concerns for that. Um, we could always we could budget for that. If we budget for a third deputy, that would be cost us about hundred thousand dollars. If not for it, um, I just received the contract price for next year, and cost us just under two hundred thousand for two deputies. That's where I got to hundred thousand. So I just rounded it up slightly. Contract is for one hundred ninety-two thousand. So. Vegetarian conversation and then around $100,000 if you want to have another definition. Not cheap. Uh, the, the deal we have with the county basically we're covering the salary and benefits for the deputy. They cover the vehicle and then bringing items like that. Uh, if we were to add that for a deputy, we don't know if the county would come back and try to change cost share or anything like that. Assumptions are they would still keep the same. I can't guarantee that. I mean, this is something we've talked about for a while. The city would be on the two deputy marker. Um, I know Jesse, John, and I were talking about this. You know, they were thinking too that we should probably be at three, maybe four, probably getting close to that. Being we're getting close to five thousand people, um, we're probably going to need to look at some coverage. I doubt that we're going to get granted a third. But I'm almost thinking we got to flick their ear and see. I mean, we got to have, we got to make sure that we've got the town covered when we're growing like this. We don't want to have any issues. We don't got to get caught flat footed on anything either. So, well, and I have some concerns with um, the diversion. Um, right, like we've been, yeah, like we've been talking about because. Luckily, we still have a couple more years before they'll be here because they're starting from the north, working south. I mean, they're doing some preliminary here, but they don't have the whole crew this way yet. So it's going to buy us a little bit of time, but not a lot. But yeah, it's the concern that we all have to be aware of. It it's never coming. hurts to ask. Right. We can always ask. And I agree. We've, you know, we've had some pretty serious incidences and as we grow mm -hmm. there are a lot of different people coming into our community that 
haven't necessarily grown up here. Right. And maybe they're coming from different areas or different backgrounds, or maybe they're just passing through for construction, that type of thing. But we need to make sure that our homes, our children, and our families stay secure. Absolute top priority, secure and safe. So that's why I'm thinking we should at least ask. Again, I don't know. I agree with Brent. We're probably not going to get very far with it, but I think we do need to ask so that there's a record of it that we are trying to get more assistance down here. What do you guys think? <clears throat> yeah, I guess I'd like to hear from the uh, deputies too what their thoughts are on it. And I, I guess I don't remember what the they were up quite a bit this last Not this one. the last one. You can look at it. Two years ago to now. I'll take the license there. It was also in the annual report. Yeah, the annual report. It's probably the best thing to look at uh, for okay. total year. It was years. interesting at that annual report. It showed, I thought there was a, at one point in 20, 2020. It actually went, it down, went down because of then, the pandemic. Yeah. And then it, it's mm -hmm. coming right back up. And then and it's, it's it spiked again. up. Yeah. So People were. Right. 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 Other cities and their size, right? They the don't have the right dynamics our community has. He has yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know if you want to talk about tonight, but I mean, it's nine. nine. But not, I, I mean, tonight. I would just like, to, or do we need to make it some sort of. No. Decision? That's not doing it. Okay. Very much. It's not okay. Uh, but what I was going to point out is if you look at other communities, you know, keep in mind the dynamics and force are different than other communities in the metro here. The Castle Plan, I believe, has two and a half deputies. And Gilworth, if you look at their coverage, is around believe, five or six officers. Maybe a little bit more, but they're right. Gilworth has five or six. They're in a ballpark. But they're more of a. I read. I there was an article about Gilworth. Yeah. I could ask them how they're doing that. Um, but it, it ranges, every city is different. We compare, you know, Kindred, I believe it's a uh, happening. So, you know, Kindred, yeah, is a lot smaller. Not so much going on there compared to Boris on this. Um, but it's, you have to keep in mind, we have different dynamics going on. You look at the growth, we have one construction can be going on. I can say from what I've seen so far, the, conver the topics of conversation have been more of like, Theft, break in. Mm -hmm. That has occurred more um, than I've seen in the last four years. Uh, we just have more construction vehicles on site. I mean, than we did say the the deputies did a lot of drug enforcement. They had a lot of that. Like when I first started, I remember them doing a lot of drug enforcement challenges. It's gotten better. They cleaned up quite mm -hmm. a bit of that up. I'm not saying it doesn't exist in the community. It does, but I just don't want there to be a, a long lifetime mm -hmm. if there is. Like we said, we've seen a lot of break ins. And as a single parent, I struggle. Oh, if someone were that. to enter my home, what would I do? And how long would I have? Now, some of you that know me know what I would do, but <laughs> not everybody is <laughs> like that. So I need to make sure that our response times are there for those that. Don't react. Well, I had somebody walk right up um, to my up my driveway right. and um, stole um, a little four wheeler. You're kidding? No. So when was this? A couple weeks ago. Oh. <gasps> so um, I'm just saying, you know, it's when you're getting brave enough to just go all the way up to somebody's garage and take something. It's pretty yep. annoying. Agreed. So, Brent, what else you got there? Um, a couple others are, as I'm going through the utilities, utility rates, um, 
as of right now, I'm looking at it's for the only utility that we have not assess out of the solid waste, it's garbage recycle, vector, and forestry. Of those right now, we're looking at it's up those three solid waste. <laughs> Closed off, they take that. Uh, that. The additional dollars that goes towards that solid waste fund helps with the compost site. Uh, that has been a very popular area. It's used by a lot of residents. We don't live there. Just take a look at it, look there take a look at it again. But we have dumpsters hauled off frequently. So uh, we would like to be able to do some improvements over time to that site too. And like I said, that's the main fund to use that. Sales tax would be the main funds that would be used by traffic fund. Up to the site improvements in that area. So just something for your consideration there. Uh, utility rates, we discussed those a little while back. Water and sewers here, right now we're looking at probably keep the same. Uh, water, we already have that planned rate increase there uh, for it's October. So we go live and cast for the water. And we'll have to implement that rate increase. Mm -hmm. We'll go live until later date, and we propose delaying that still. So, uh, we want to make sure that when we go live, after we've gone live, we'll have the rate up to the base of 27. That's the price for any other costs. Um, Another item we're looking at is in regards to equipment, vehicles, areas like that for public works. Uh, we'd be proposing two vehicles, one would be addition, one would be a replacement. Um, the one that's addition would be the cost. We have a budgetary cost around 45000 The one for replacement would be at uh, 135000 Differences to the type of truck we're looking at. Guessing the cat versus trying to. What are we replacing? Are these pickups or what are these? These are pickups. Yep. The um, replacement is we have a old half, a half ton Dodge single cap we replace and it basically replaces a single cap half ton. For what departments? Public works. And then the crew cab would be a half ton. And that would be an addition that would be for public works. Awesome. vehicles for. Have to be able to do their own time to tackle their different projects. Um, the other one would be what we have in here so far, and I still have to work with the numbers, but these are the items that we're looking towards looking at. Would be yeah, another side by side, Ranger side by side they, that is used by public works and by building inspections. Both we'll use those or use the one that we have. It's very popular with our staff to use. Um, and does work good for data on different job sites like building inspections for going out to the field. Um, we said public works, they use it quite a bit, especially when they're doing things like water like that. Plus, it's a little easier on gas. A little bit easier. Uh, we have two equipment trailer replacements one at a much straight cost, 8000 one for 10 Is going to be replacing some of the trailers that we have. And then Safe, shop safety improvements, such as uh, flammable cap cabinets, changing fence around that so we can secure our flammables and chemicals that should be secured. Um, yeah, we much trade for right now for 8,000. And the two couple other improvements that we have on here, this is the big one would be to do some improvements to the empty lot so that we have just south of our big shed. We have there, we have an empty lot there. Like to be able to grab all that, the fence up, and also have a canopy over our the overhang off of our uh, big shed where you can park vehicles or equipment. 
that is safe from some of the elements, like screen readers and all these things like that, protecting storage there. That's not quite doing the work. So we are going through getting processes right now on that. I believe that would be able to keep our costs on quite a bit and give us the empty lot that we have where we actually have a little bit of the yard that we're using with all the so we're having sand or aerial or spot park trailers, for example. So those are things that we're going to Okay. And then the last one, which is never a great thing, I have to ask it is in regards to mills. Obviously, what we always try to do is shoot for keeping the mills the same. Keep in mind in your budget. If you do have any piece of really bring it back down, and then let's say we have definitely coverage, if they say no, we're not going to have that. Right now. Is council, do you like us to say no, we're going to just target keeping the exact same? What is council's evidence towards doing a slight increase on that middle? Yeah, if we have an increase, another thing to consider would be to make a dollars for reserves. That's been a goal of ours at the city the last couple of years. We've got additional funds available towards the end of the year. We try to put some in reserves and then we have the need. We address the need also. Um, but those special reserves, just so everybody understands, part of that, us increasing that will help us with our bond rating. Yes. That and will help also help with what rating or what percent we get when we yeah. go out for these special assessment bonds. The more that we can show that we have reserves, we'll probably get a better deal when we go out on the yeah. bond and, market. And we have fresh to stay within. Yep. That's actually for those for like a general fund reserve. Now the utilities are in their low world per se, but the general fund reserve, for example, there's a maximum what we can have in that. But not a bad idea to have some reserves. And we're not getting anywhere near that. Yeah. So that like Corey mentioned, that would help us with our bond ratings and just showing stronger financial So a long ways oh, yeah. in the last couple of years. If you look at our old audits from four, six years ago, eight years ago. Compared to now, big difference. Um, and that is a conversation that's very much with our rating problems there when we're going through ratings. Okay, what can we do to help our position? Continue to build reserves and reserves and continue to do what we're doing. And what, what is our current bond rating? Bond rating is B, a BAA tool. 